there is this huge false dichotomy in the marketing world that you need to avoid. And it is the debate between whether you should be doing awareness or brand marketing or direct response marketing. Now, because of this false dichotomy, what ends up happening for most people in business to business marketing is they want to go in the direct response camp because they do not want to be associated with the brand marketing side. So the brand marketing side tends to be more in the, the business to consumer space where you're dealing with large consumer markets. So herein lies the problem. What ends up happening is business to business marketers and those that are doing LinkedIn marketing specifically end up obsessing over optimizing responses. And the way that they optimize responses is they create offers that people are willing to provide their email for or willing to go through some sort of gating process to get access to. So what ends up happening is you create all these things like interesting white papers, interesting webinars, interesting content that people want to consume, and they're willing to give information to get access to that content. But there's not necessarily a tight segue from that content into actually buying your product or having any interest or buying intent to purchase your product. So you have all these business to business marketers who are obsessed with gating content to create leads, direct responses, instead of doing what they should actually be doing, which is optimizing customer acquisition cost and customer lifetime value. And in order to do that, you need to break down this false dichotomy. You have to stop thinking that you're either in a direct response marketing way of thinking, or you're in a brand awareness, broad based type of thinking. You have to merge the two and you need to think of campaigns in advanced LinkedIn marketing in this way, where you're both creating awareness and there are different stages of awareness that I'm going to talk about and you're also creating direct responses. But the responses that you're getting aren't just superficial ones that inflate your leads numbers. They're ones that actually show that somebody has purchase intent. So that the leads that you're handing to the sales team from your LinkedIn advertising are actually leads that sales are ultimately gonna end up close. They're the kinds of leads that sales actually wants to talk to. So, one of the problems internally, if you're in kind of this direct response fixation, is that the marketing department's KPIs are associated with things like marketing qualified leads. And the problem with marketing qualified leads is that often the definition is very bad. It's based on things like content consumption, or did people uh, consume X number of white papers? Did they click through to X number of emails? And if they show a certain level of engagement, then they're considered a marketing qualified lead. My definition of a marketing qualified lead is usually something that shows that the prospect can be handed to the sales team. And that's generally something like requesting a free trial, requesting a demo, requesting a consultation, contacting sales, uh, requesting pricing information, request, requesting a price quote. That's what I would consider a marketing qualified lead. Now, I actually have a stricter definition than a lot of companies that say that, oh, consuming lots of content, going through lots of, of gated information is a marketing qualified lead. But even in my case, with my strict definition of a marketing qualified lead, I don't think that's the KPI you should be optimizing for. Because what ends up happening in cases like this is you generate marketing qualified leads, say demo requests, uh, that get handed to the sales team. There's no responsibility on your part to make sure that those actually become paying customers. So there's all sorts of hacking and gimmickry that happens with marketing teams that uh, optimize for that. Instead, you should be optimizing for uh, things such as pipeline revenue. So uh, marketing uh, qualified leads that become sales qualified opportunities uh, and ultimately to paying customers. Now the problem with optimizing for paying customers is that there's there's often a, a long sales cycle so it's very difficult to do that when you're 
uh, you're not seeing closed contracts for another six months or something. So things like sales qualified opportunities are a great way to optimize in sort of the, the medium term. And in the short term, things like demo requests can be uh, nice leading indicators. So the important thing is that you not try to obsess over direct response marketing and get into the, the false thinking that this is somehow superior types of marketing, that gating content, uh, capturing leads, measuring things that are measurable are somehow better than uh, things that produce more longer term impact. Instead, you need to be thinking about what in the long term will actually result in new paying customers, in new revenue. And what that's going to require is LinkedIn campaigns that do both uh, direct response when it's appropriate and uh, awareness and education when that's appropriate. And often what that means is that you actually do not want to gate content. What you actually want to do is uh, allow people to consume as much content as possible with as little friction as possible. And that means making sure that they can get access to things like your case studies, your videos, your blog posts, your white papers, without needing to uh, provide any information that captures them as leads. And ultimately what that's going to do is uh, produce a stronger performance on the, the revenue side, but perhaps a weaker performance on the vanity metrics like, oh, we, we, we capture this many leads or, or white paper downloads because uh, we're obsessed with measuring direct responses.